The purpose of this video is to demonstrate the use of TALUS transparent encryption in a DB2 database environment and why that would be important in other database environments as well. So as a representative of database data, I'm going to be using this database. The database name is called CCDB and in that database I have a table that has some, you know, sample sensitive information. And so you can see the information here and this is the information that I want to protect. And of course it's vulnerable to you know, database access and you can use database permissions to grant and deny access based on database users. But you can also try to attack this data by going directly to the data files. And let me show you that type of attack. The database directory tells me where the database is, is being stored on the file system. So if I go to that directory, and if I was a rogue piece of ransomware or malware or just a rogue storage admin, I could, you know, attack or get access to this data by di looking directly at the data files. In this case, this directory happens to be where the user data is being stored. And there's a file here, and this is a DB2 data file that is storing that information. I'm going to use a command called strings, and what string, strings does, it, it, it simply looks at a character in the file, and if it's a member of a printable character set, such as an ASCII character, then it will display that character. If it's a non-printable character, it'll simply ignore it and not display anything. And so that's all the strings does. It's just a Unix command. But as you can see, using that simple Unix command, I can see the actual data. So that data is being stored inside the database in a well-structured way, but it's not an encrypted from either access by the instance owner, or the database owner in this case, or by someone like running as a privileged user like root. Even the numerical data, which is not displayed here, is, is in a format called PAX Decimal, meaning it's just a well-structured way of storing numbers. So if I go in and to, I was to actually look at the more bit level of the file, I would be able to find and determine the actual numbers as well. So this is the kind of attack that we want to prevent by encrypting the database. To do that, I'm going to use transparent encryption. Now, I've already installed the agent and registered the agent on the database node. In this case, that node is Linux node 1. So what I'm going to do is create a policy. And then within this policy, I'm going to grant um, access to, in this case, the database engine, which is what I'm going to trust to have access to the data. And since the database engine has the proper permissions to grant and deny access to those who connect to the database, by using this methodology, I can say the only thing that should be reading and writing this data is the database engine. If you're granted connect to the database and you're granted select or access to the tables, then your database permissions will work. But you cannot bypass those permissions and go and attack the data directly from a data file. So here's the basis of the policy I'm going to create, and we'll call this policy db2 underscore. And this policy will be good for anywhere I'm using db2. I am going to make this a live data transfer policy so we can rekey the data online as well as um, rotate the database encryption key while keeping the data online. So when I have an LDD policy, 
our live data transform policy, I always get this first key that reflects the the internal tooling that does the key application and key rotation. I'm going to add another. Um, let me go back. I'm going to add another security rule. In this case, the security rule is going to be for um, DB2 processes. And I'm creating a, this process set. I'm adding the DB2 uh, database processes. These are the processes that actually do the file I/O to the database engine. And db2sysc is the main process that does all the work. So I have a single process in this process set. And I'm going to permit and apply the key. And I don't want an audit record when the database engine accesses the data. I want an audit record when it's not the database engine. I'm going to add another security rule. In this case, this security rule is designed to do one thing, and that is to look at the I.O. or look at the behavior and determine by the audit records whether the policy is acting the way I want it to. So if you see it, this rule, and the way to read the rule is from left to right. Resource is file or directory within the guard point. And a guard point is when I create a policy or apply a policy to a directory, that is my guard point. So this basically says for every file and directory within the guard point, for every user, again blank means all, for every process, for every action, action is kind of I.O., permit and apply the key. Right? Rules are evaluated in order. So rule number one is for key rotation. Rule number two is for DB2. It says for all the files, for all the users, if the process that is doing the I.O. is a member of, the, of this process set, and currently there's only one process in that process set, and that's db 2 sysc performing any I.O., I'm going to permit and apply the key. If it doesn't meet that rule, then it will meet this next rule. So this is going to be a trial rule or a temporary rule that I'm going to use to evaluate the activity. And once I get the uh, policy set up the way I want it to, then I can simply delete this rule and I'll be enforcing um, the behavior that I want. So I'm going to add one more security rule. That's deny and audit. So the last rule is says if none of the rules are met, in this case the first three, then we're going to deny the behavior. If no rule of a policy was met, then the default behavior is to always to deny. So having this rule as my catch-all rule is, is in every policy I create and always the last rule in the policy. I'm going to create a key. So I need what's this current state of the data? Well the current state of the data is in clear text so we choose clear key. The data transforming key is when I create or when I encrypt the data what key do I want the data to be encrypted with? And I'm going to go ahead and going to create a new key. We'll call it DB2 key. And it is a, a symmetric AES 256 bit key. And I can select that key. And here's a summary of the policy. All right, the name of the policy, it is Live Data Transformation. Here are the rules of the policy. The policy is very simple. Key operations, full access to DDB2, full access to everything, but give it generate an audit record. And then the last rule is deny everything else. So again, rules are evaluated in order. If I meet rule two, um, when DB2 has access, I'm not going to generate an audit record. But if it's not DB2 or it's not a process in this process set, then I'm going to permit the I.O. but generate an audit record. Deny everything else. And then the current state of the data is clear text. And then I'm going to encrypt the data with this new uh, DB2 key. All right, so now I have a policy to use. 
But before that, I need to edit the profile of the, that is applied to this host. So if I look at the default client profile, one of the things that's important is the logging information. So by default, the profile that's applied to a host, unless you choose a different profile, is that error messages are generated. Well, in terms of policy evaluation, a permit audit is not an error message. It's an informational message. So we don't, um, we need to also uh, allow informational messages to be applied. So an informational message, and this is, this is a hierarchy. So error is a lower in the hierarchy and informational is more generic. So info level includes warning, error, and fatal, of course. So I want to um, see informational messages. I don't mind it's about suppressing duplicates. And I want to log that information to a file. And again, I want that to be informational. And I am going to turn on concise logging, which reduces the amount of extraneous records or duplicate records that are of no interest to me. So I have to do this in order to see permit audits. I by default would see deny audits because a deny audit is an error message. All right, and so that updates the client that way. Now I'm ready to go out and apply that guard point. We're almost ready to go out and apply the guard point. In order to create the guard point, I need to have exclusive access to this directory. So that does mean I need to stop DB2. Okay, once the database is start, stopped, I can create my guard point. on the path where the data is being stored. All right, in fact, there's data has already been rekeyed because it was such a small database. Now I can restart the database. and produce some activity. Okay, so everything works. Now let's take a, let's generate some, a record at least that I know um, I can see in the audit trail. So let's do this. Now I'm going to log in as root and then go look at the audit trail. So I am now root. I can go look at the log. And this VMD log file actually points to the Vorm VMD root log file, but so let's just take a look at it. So you can see by this audit record that uh, user db2 inst1, right? The policy that was in play was db2 policy. Use the process bash to do a write app into this text file, and that the the file created was encrypted with a key. In this case the key is db2 key and this is a permit action 
and it met rule number three. So what, rule number one was not met because there was the wrong action criteria. Rule number two was not met because it failed the process criteria because the process isn't DB2CC. And then rule number three was met. Notice there's not any database activity for the, the uh, connection or the read of the database data file. And the reason is it met rule number two and rule number two doesn't generate an audit record. So I can at this point go in and do all my database activity. I can do database backups, database restores, connections to the database. If I have things such as um, replication, I can test replication. Everything's going to work. I'm not denying anything at this point. But I can then look at the audit trail and what I'm looking for is processes, right? Processes that have not been added to the DB2 processes. Processes that I trust should be in the DB2 process set. I add those processes to the process set, continue to work on, and then once I have got the uh, policy in a restricted way that allows me and trusts you know my trusted processes then I can then delete that one rule that is you know allowing too much access and and then from then on enforce and that's all there is to you know creating a dbg policy